Joy Holiday. We're located in Millbrae, which is not too far from here. We've been around uh, since 1995, um, and we do all types of tours and travel, and uh, we have our own vehicles. We have our buses. We have uh, about uh, 14 units right now, um, large, medium, and small buses. That's, uh, that, uh, those buses, we go all over the western region of the United States. We, uh, and for our outbound trips, uh, we do a lot of Asian trips, as well as the rest of the world. And we especially uh, love to uh, put together trips like this one, um, which involves not just tourism, of, of, you know, a little bit of uh, uh, culture, a little bit of history, plus learning. Um, so we, we feel that this is especially meaningful, all right, to be able to uh, bridge the two cultures, uh, the East and the West. Okay, so we do uh, quite a few over the years. Um, so, this one, uh, it, you know, we, I, I was fortunate to have the chance to talk with Mrs. Chen, and Mrs. Chen told me that uh, she really wanted to put something like this together a couple of years ago, but it didn't happen. So that's why I'm here to help, and I'll be glad to uh, answer any any questions uh, afterwards. So uh, why don't we start by? Going into well, I just talked about us a little bit more about us. Um, we're a member of the National Tour Association, or NTA. We've been a member since 2008, and I was actually on the board of 2014 and 15 because uh, the board uh, wanted to develop or know more about the uh, China tourism, China USA tourism. Uh, outbound, inbound, both ways. So I've been involved with that, those kind of work. And um, also, we're, we, we are, we're with PVB, the Better Business Bureau, for many years, and we have an A plus rating. So those, you can, you'll be able to search that online and you see us. Um, also Google, yeah, if you Google us, you know, we have some pretty good reviews because we have uh, great tour directors, we, we, uh, we offer uh, a lot of uh, good services and you know, we have a lot of good feedback uh, for you know, all types of tours. So we're, we're multilingual, so that means uh, we have guys that speak uh, English, Chinese, or other languages we could you know, uh, work with different uh, types of groups. And um, for us, uh, doing this type of trip from USA to China, um, our tour directors will most likely, okay, depending on the group, so, so for, such as our group, will have a tour director from USA all the way to, to China or wherever, Taiwan. And this way, um, uh, even though you will still get the local guides in China and Taiwan, but we'll still have a guide all the way from USA go around the whole, with the whole group. And that will be an added uh, bonus. It will be, it will make a huge difference. Okay, so I'll, I can talk about that later, but not now. Yeah, why it's it's better to have somebody go all the way through with the group. Welcome, yeah, please have a seat anyway. Thank you. Oh, here's my, okay. So, um, Yeah, this is, this is a, a photo of the National Tour Association board member of 2014. That's me right there. Yeah, um, this is uh, when we had the board visit Beijing. And uh, these are the board members. That's me right there. And we were of the Great Wall of China. And also we met with the, uh, the Tourism Board of China in Beijing, the headquarters. We had a discussion about the bilateral uh, tourism, and as well as uh, other provincial uh, tourism departments. So uh, it would be like a diplomatic relation. So we do that quite often. 
Yeah, so we set up uh, tourism so that we can do more exchange and, you know, um, doing, going both ways. All right, so for this here plan, for uh, folks, uh, we assume that most of us have not been to China or Taiwan. So we start with Beijing, all right? And according to the schedule for the spring break, okay, that would be uh, April the 12th, flying to Beijing, and we, we've uh, selected the United Airlines for our flight. And uh, it's going to be 15 hours ahead, okay? So they're one day ahead of us. So usually, you know, once we arrive, we're, we're probably just going to relax and go to the hotel, right? Most likely, all right? So uh, we. So on the 13th, actually, is the arrival day. And then uh, the second day, we start visiting uh, Beijing by going to the Forbidden City. So those of, those of you who have uh, no idea what that means, <laughs> it, it just, um, it's, it, it used to be the, the place where the emperor the, does business and lived the, the home of the emperor. It was the, so the, then the White House in China during the, during the Ming and Qing dynasties, okay? All right, so um, it, it is very impressive, okay? It's one, you know, you, it's a must-see when you go to Beijing. And um, uh, it, it's, uh, it, you walk inside and then you see rows and rows of walls all the way until you get to the place where the emperor meets in, uh, uh, and, and, and does business with uh, the high-ranking officials. And then visiting the next building after that will be the, uh, the, the resting quarters and you know, other you know, areas. So it's a huge place and it's well preserved and uh, very impressive. Um, well, after that, we're doing some uh, something that's not usually uh, done uh, if it's just a regular tour group. So for our group, we do uh, painting, making kites. Now those are just two examples. We could uh, throw in other things. We could, you know, uh, learn how to cut paper with scissors and make them into lanterns or animals or whatever. We could do a lot of different type of uh, traditional uh, Chinese art or you know, Chinese uh, historical uh, arts and, and crafts. So we can learn and get hands on. So we like to get our group you know, engaged in, uh, you know, in, in these kind of activities. So you not only see, but you also you know, get immersed by doing, okay? So I think that's a very important component, all right? And, uh, and then we rest, and then the next day we visit, of course, we're gonna see the Great Wall, okay? Now, it's a, you, you know, it's a World Heritage Site. It, you, know, you can see it from, uh, from outer space, you know, man-made structure, okay? It's very long, and it's, uh, of course, uh, it says here, yeah, 21,000 kilometers from the east to the west. Quite impressive, okay? It's built by the first emperor called Qing, uh, in the Qing dynasty, Qing Shi Huang, the first emperor of Qing, and thousands of years ago, you know, two, two, three thousand years ago. So, and, and uh, you know, we, I, you know, I personally would, always do something different, you know, with when, we, when we're out there doing the tours. Um, whereas other groups may be arriving after, you know, after probably uh, getting, you know, through the traffic, having breakfast, go through the traffic, get there around 10, 11. Uh, we would actually leave early. Um, and probably just have a breakfast uh, on the way and get away from the traffic 
right, by getting up earlier. Since we're still getting over the jet lag, and because this is only the second day we're out there, and most of us will, you know, get up pretty early. <laughs> So I like to do that because, you know, since we're up already, why don't we just go? Yeah, so that's why we do it differently. We kind of, you know, get a head start, so to speak. All right, so that way we beat the traffic. And also, when we get there, I, I love it when there's nobody around, just us, because you can't get crowded, you know, in China, you know, at various uh, sightseeing places. Okay. So uh, usually the, 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 the our groups will just love it, yeah, because when they have the whole great wall there and they're not, you know, they're not like bumper to bumper <laughs> with all the other tour passenger, uh, tour, uh, tour groups, uh, you get more enjoyable uh, time there and nicer pictures. So um, once we're done, and we see, we'll see all the cars and buses pulling in and, and people go up there like, you know, you know, crowded everywhere, but we're, we're through already, okay? And then, and then we go to lunch, and then we go, we go do other things. And, and then, for that day, we uh, we could visit the uh, one of one of the more uh, prestigious schools in, in Beijing. Right? We have um, good relationships with many schools and colleges and universities, as well as uh, high schools, uh, because we have partners in Beijing that have uh, been working with the tourism and educational sector for, for many years. Uh, ever since uh, we started in 1995, we've been sending groups from America to China. So we've done it, you know, we have a lot of experience there. All right, so we've done a lot of music groups. Uh, I just want to give you an example. I know we're not the music group, but um, we have done groups where we would set up a group where they perform on the Great Wall with American students and then Chinese students together perform music for all the tours. They were all very impressed. All right, so we've done stuff like that before. <clears throat> we do a campus visit, communication activities, uh, sports, <coughs> academic exchange, introduce ourselves, they're gonna introduce themselves, uh, gonna you know, know more about what life is like for students over there, what, what type of day they go through, you know, just, just get, you know, mingle together, and we want to try to uh, have a basketball kind of, a, you know, um, play a little, you know, sports, yeah. Um, so, so that's second day. And then Temple of Heaven. All right, it's also another impressive place where the emperors go to pray for better harvest, or, um, for, for, yeah, so, so they pray for the heaven, all right? So very traditional, very historical. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, history on how the ancient, ancient China operated. So you learn a lot there too, right? And also, whenever we, we visit Temple of Heaven, we noticed that in the, we, we would always like to go in the morning, so in the morning time especially, you have all these people lined up there doing line dancing, and then this group here, you're doing the Tai Chi, and some are uh, doing uh, dances or uh, just a group of people playing chess in the morning, so, and there just some just out there doing morning exercises. So it's, it's pretty, it's like a, um, you, you actually see it's not just a touristy stuff, but a touristy place, but it's also a place where there's a community of people living here, um, you, know, you know, just being involved right there. So, um, so it's, I think it's always neat to, to see. Now, then we go to do the, the rickshaw ride and go into the hutong. Now, what does that mean, hutong? like uh, square villages where families will share a courtyard and they share everything else okay like restroom or bathroom but families or you know some are close but some are not related some are related so those hutongs are left there since the Ming Dynasty which is uh, maybe uh, three or four hundred years ago so those are very historical and we do a traditional rickshaw right so you can go through the neighborhood, see the real China, the, the, the old neighborhood. Okay?
So most people will really enjoy that. It's fun. Yeah. And, uh, and then we have, uh, of course, we need to have roast duck, Beijing Peking duck. Now, we mention it because it's iconic, but practically every meal you're going to try something different, <laughs> something new. And we love to put in di different types of menu, good food, so that you could, from the food, you can also learn about the culture. And why is it that when you go to the north, they eat noodles more than rice? And why do you go to Sichuan or other places they eat spicy food? Um, there are reasons because it's related to the geography and some of the beliefs and traditions of the local people. So by tasting the food and you know, trying different foods, you actually you know, have, you know, have, a, have a, a, a deeper understanding of your culture. So of course, food is, is all tied up, you know, very closely tied with us because it goes into us and it becomes us. <laughs> so we like to also um, go to a farm where you can see how the farmers in China today produces their food, okay? So you learn something there, the agricultural uh, ways uh, where they, how, you know, how they deal with um, uh, the, uh, the growth, harvest, uh, how they uh, use uh, the latest technology of sci and science to uh, enhance you know, the growth and how they uh, uh, supply food to the public. So, so there's, uh, but this is, uh, this is tentative because we want to know about the group first before we decide finally on which, um, which you know, if, if we're going to do an agricultural ex experience or high tech or, or, or science. So it really depends on the group. So this is Chen and I, we're still working on that, but the others are going to be set. Just this type of special visit where we could, we could you know, modify that, or we can change it. Okay. <clears throat> but for now, this is on the list with, with Beijing, and most people love it because it's also at a natural setting where you have a little ecology rather than just being in buildings. Okay. Um, and now we are um, done with uh, Beijing. We'll head to Sh Shanghai. Yeah. So, of course, everybody knows Shanghai is uh, metropolis is. You, people often compare it to New York, but you know it's pretty much the economic center of China, right? With the uh, fancy skyscrapers. And if you want to see something that represents the modern China, Shanghai is the place to go, right? If you want to see the political center and the historical center, go to Beijing. Okay, it's the capital. Right? But Shanghai, there's two ways to get there. So we choose uh, the better way. Uh, depending on the season and depending on the situation. So more than likely, we're going to do the high-speed rail. Okay? So you can, uh, it's actually very comfortable. Yeah, it travels like, you know, about 300 kilometers an hour. Yeah, kilometers, not miles, okay? Yeah, very fast, okay? <laughs> miles probably around, all, not, not yet, two, 200 maybe? Less than two, yeah, about 200. It's still fast. Right. So uh, you can experience that, right? Um, and uh, you you find out when you go to China, you see this. You know, everybody knows it's a big you know it's a big population. They have what 1.54 billion people. So if everybody fly, then you know, uh, airports be jammed all the time. So uh, their solution is to keep building and building uh, high speed rail. So it's linking all the provinces up. All the cities in China, and uh, and it's quite convenient, yeah, and gets you places, yeah. So we're going to try to do the high speed rail, all right. And then we get to the bun, which is the bun just means the the area where everybody goes to see the beautiful night, um, the, the the lights and the and the river, the Hongfu River, okay, the the river that 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 goes right through. Uh, the, 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 met, the metropolitan area of Shanghai. Um, Nanjing Road, you see lots of people, it's the busiest shopping street in probably in all of China. All right, you see, you see the modern China right there. And 
you see how um, China is changing. Okay? So those of you who, who are not really familiar with China would think that China was, is pretty, pretty like a lot of villages, things are still kind of, you know, just uh, like the countryside, but, but you know, it, when you get there, you're gonna see a whole different world. So, interesting to go there, but we feel that in Shanghai, we don't need to really spend a lot of time, but we just wanna, you know, go there. And, um, and then we'll fly from Shanghai to Taipei, Taiwan, okay? So, um, it's an island, okay, off the coast of mainland China, okay. Now, um, Mrs. Chen and myself, we're, we're, we were born, we were from Taiwan, actually. Yeah, so I, uh, a little bit about my, myself personally, I, I immigrated to USA with my family uh, in 1980. So I pretty much came as a little kid, and I grew up here. Uh, I lived in the, I lived in Chicago. I lived in Maryland, uh, near D.C., and uh, I've been in California since '95. And uh, uh, in '95, I came here. I continued my studies. I studied at the uh, San Francisco State University. I studied philosophy, and uh, and I've been uh, involved with the tourism business since uh, since in the early 90s. So I, even when I was studying, I, I, I had uh, been a tour director. So this is, as you can see, this is my passion. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and also, Taiwan is, is, a, is a really a, a, a passionate place for, for, for many uh, visitors. It's very friendly, okay? It's a different type of uh, country, a type, type of different type of government system. Um, just to familiarize uh, the, the, you know, the, the history about Taiwan is uh, uh, it became a separate system with the mainland China in 1949 uh, when there was a civil war. It was a civil war, so pretty much, as you know, Chinese government uh, is ruled by one party and then Taiwan is ruled by another party. So they're all originally Republic of China, okay, all the same. But then they have a two different systems. And we feel that it would be very interesting to have us go see, if you want to really see the Chinese people or in, China, in the land of China, you, you, we feel that it's important to have Taiwan because uh, it's also a part of China. But under a different system, you could feel the difference in the infrastructure, the people, the way things are, you know, handled, and you know, a lot of different things. Okay, so anyway, uh, the Sun Sun Yat Shen. This is a Memorial Hall, which is a beautiful building, very impressive. But let me tell you the significance of this. Uh, he's a, he was a doctor and went into politics, and. Um, he went to he went to politics by starting a war with the Qing Emperor, <laughs> right? Yeah. So that was uh, in the early 1900s. He overthrew the Qing Dynasty, so it marked the end of the feudal, you know, the feudal society or the emperor, you know, kind of a way. And much like in USA democracy, it set up the uh, the democratic government in all of China, all right? So that was started by Dr. Sun, all right? So he's also called the father of, of uh, the country of China, okay? Uh, because he changed the old ways. <clears throat> and then Chiang Kai-shek was his general, uh, his successor, okay? He was, he was the uh, leader for the military and as well for as well as the uh, he became the president of the new China. All right, and after the Civil War, he had been defeated. So they the troops retreated to the island of Taiwan. And my grandparents were among the troops <laughs> in the my grandparents was Navy. And um, my, on my mother's side, she, uh, her side was Air Force, right? 
So I, I was born in Taiwan, but my, my dad and my grandparents were actually born in China, but then they came on a ship fleeing to, to, the, <laughs> to the mainland, uh, the, to the island. So, and then we got mixed together with the folks who were already there, uh, starting for, you know, about 300 years ago from the Ming Dynasty. There were a lot of fishermen that went from the coast of China that sailed over to Taiwan two, three hundred years ago, or even even uh, earlier than that. And at that, that time, two, three hundred years ago, there were a lot of, a lot more of the Aborigine or the, the native people, right? So Taiwan also has a lot of native culture. Just to give you kind of a background. Taipei 101 is uh, over 100 stories tall. It's its tallest structure, uh, pretty much in, in the in all of China right now. So, uh, including the mainland. So, it's a very impressive structure, um, and, and and it's a, it's also a very modern area of Taipei. And most people enjoy Taipei very much because it's very comfortable. It's very modern. It has a lot of pubs, a lot of restaurants, a lot of. Uh, uh, you know, also many night markets. Speaking of night markets, uh, there are a lot of them everywhere. But what, what happens is you just, you know, we'll take one chance to have everybody go into the night market. It's safe. It's very, very safe. When we're talking about night market, people start to worry, okay, so we're going out at night. But just when we go to the night market, uh, we go together through the night market and lots of little different kind of eatery, you know, lots of different interesting stuff, okay? And uh, it's just the whole atmosphere, you know, it's just very, very, you know, Taiwan is very well known for that. But that's what we're gonna do when we get to Tainan. Tainan means, Tai means the, the first letter of Taiwan, but Nan means south, so south of Taiwan, Tainan. So Taipei, Pei means Bay, means north. So Taipei is the capital of Taiwan. So we land near the capital, but we're gonna go straight to Tainan, the southern part. And southern part of Taiwan is known for its delicious food. Like I said, you know, you can taste a lot of them at the night eat night market. And also the friendly people. The people are very warm. Uh, people are just uh, uh, kind of different than city, but it's also uh, uh, got city and agriculture, it's got a mix of everything. So we go there and we st spend the night and uh, and then that's actually where we're going to have the, the, the high school that Mrs. Chen and I have, uh, uh, we have a relationship with the school and they, they, they will be able to come out with us and greet us and then the next day we'll go to the, uh, we, we will Next morning, we will uh, go visit the high school. All right, we will sit in the class with them, mm -hmm. and we will get to know each other by again by introdu introducing ourselves, and we'll do a little hands-on activity, uh, maybe a little cooking class or something. But you know, those are all tentative. But you know, that's what we want to really do to make it happen, so we can you know get get our hands dirty, well, not dirty, but you know, just you know learn how to maybe uh, make dumplings or something. <laughs> yeah, we feel that's a good way to, to you know, break the ice and know each other. And uh, may or may not do a, a basketball or whatever sports, but, you know, we'll do, you know th those are all, you know, the, the, you know we, we'll talk about that, those details, uh, when we have a group, group together. Uh, and then in the afternoon, uh, we'll go see the historical sites of Tainan with the students of that high school together on the same bus. So the teachers there and the students there with us all together, they will be kind of the escorts or the tour docents or guides at the same time they will take turns introduce, introducing their home, to, uh, their home to you. So I would feel that that will be a, a very meaningful way to get to know each other. Palace Museum, okay. Now 700,000 pieces of ancient Chinese imperial artifacts and artworks were moved over from China when my grandfather fled China. <laughs> no, I was just saying, Chiang Kai-shek, okay, had brought those treasures from the mainland to Taiwan, 
All right, when, when, when he lost the, uh, the, the mainland, he lost it. But he decided to keep that. So it's in the museum in Taipei, all right? And that's why you get to see a lot of the, oh my goodness, a lot of uh, uh, treasures, yeah, just, uh, you know. Um, and we're gonna have somebody, well, I think Mrs. Chen has somebody who's gonna give us detailed orientation and, you know, uh, narration of all the artifacts, dating all the way back to Qing Dynasty. You know, so you've got 5,000 years of culture and history in that building. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's going to be very enjoyable. Xi Ling residence is like the is like the um, the president's home when when uh, Chiang Kai Shek, the uh, original uh, the original um, president, that uh, came in 1949. Beautiful garden, right? And you learn through his lens and his perspective about his challenges coming to an island and then losing the whole China, whole mainland, and can come to a small island like this, and now what? Okay, well, first of all, you're always thinking, okay, I gotta get it back. You know, China, China needs to, I, I need to <laughs> get back what I lost. But then at the same time, he wanted to really do a good job with the de democracy in Taiwan, so he, he worked very hard on developing Taiwan in the early days. Martyr Swine is uh, very interesting because all, most of the tourists will enjoy the marching and the changing of guards, which is very impressive. Um, very inspirational, too. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, back, back when uh, during the World War II, or right before World War II, uh, the army had uh, uh, dealt with uh, invasion from Japan, and at that time uh, we were allies. USA, Taiwan, you know, China, USA were allies. So, you know, a lot of the system is still still very similar. Okay, USA and China, the way it's you know managed the whole country. Ximending is is in in downtown Taipei. Is also another place where a lot of young folks go. Uh, you see a lot of you know so busy, very busy. You got shopping, you got uh, eatery, you got restaurants, you got you know a whole lot of thing going on. Very interesting stuff. You know, uh, yeah, here's a big pineapple cake. <laughs> That's one of the you know the favorite delicacies, but probably the most famous dessert in Taiwan. But you you are going to be amazed at how many different kinds of food and desserts that you will be bombarded with when you're in Taiwan. It's got the mix of whole Chinese culture right in this little island with 23 million people. Because when the you know like I said, it's 1949, people fled the country from all different types of all different areas and uh, provinces and different types of backgrounds. They have different foods, so Taiwan is like a heaven for you know for tasting uh, uh, food tasting. Yeah, Yeliu is a very beautiful place by the sea. Yeah, it's a very unique rock formation. The Queen's Head, very famous. Zhou Fen is like the you know over here the Chinese call San Francisco area or the Sierra Nevadas. They call it the Gold Hill. You have the Gold Hill in Taiwan where they where they wanted to, where they were mining. Going on, but now it's a uh, little, you know, very neat ancient village streets with tea houses, you know, very, very uh, unique and special. Fish, there's also a fisherman's wharf in Taiwan, mm. okay, and Danshu, okay. So those are the coast, you know, because Taiwan's an island, so you get a little bit of the coast. And looks like it's, yeah, then it's flying home from Taipei. All right, so um, yeah, so of the tour package, it will include pretty much from start to finish, pretty much everything, because you have flights, okay, international and domestic flights. Uh, you, we have accommodations, all accommodations, 
uh, we only use four and five star hotels, nothing less than four stars. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody rests well in the, you know, and enjoy the, 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 uh, the hotels as well as the destinations. Um, breakfast, lunch, dinner, um, very comfortable transportation. Um, very, you know, of course, we have high standards for for vehicles, and we don't we don't go for the the, the type of vehicles that are not not up to par. You know, we need them to be well maintained, very new, uh, very comfortable. So we want to, you know, that that's very important for safety reasons. Okay, so uh, yeah, air ticket. Yeah, local and as well as, like I said, uh, international tour director from USA will have one. Um, and then um, all the entrance fees, yeah, all meals, uh, water, it says two bottles here, and accommodations. And then, and then tips is an optional. You can pay when you sign up or you can pay at the end. It's up to you. So, yeah, generally for all the driver, tour director, guides, total together, one passenger will pay 10 each day. And that, that already includes everybody. So you just pay 10, and that's it, okay? And then for that one day. And then you have to pay the visa service. And the visa, we can help you with that. All right, the visa, or you can do it yourself. Um, the, the Chinese the Chinese consulate is over by um, Laguna and Giri, and that will be right across the street from Japantown, next to the St. Mary's Cathedral. Uh, One hundred and seventy dollars will include everything. We'll get it done for you. You know you don't have to travel anywhere. We just give us your passport. We ask you to fill out a simple form. Give us. We'll, we'll, we'll even pick it up. We'll pick it up, and we'll deliver it to you. On, yeah, very, very, make it very easy for you. All right, that would be one hundred seventy dollars. So if you do it yourself, I think it's also a hundred. I'm sorry, one hundred and forty or something like that. Something like that. Okay. So you pay a little bit of service charge for the delivery, for getting in line, and get all that stuff taken care of. All right. So it's up to you. All right. And you get ten years. So that was the last administration, right? The USA made it bilateral agreement, 10 years visa, so you, you know, you could, years later, you know, before it's up, you can go back to China and visit other parts, you know, because we're only seeing two countries, I mean, two cities, all right. Uh, yeah, so cancellation policy, um, yeah, pretty much, you know, we'll, we'll let you know, you know, when there's a, when there's an issue about cancellation, you know, you know, travel insurance is highly recommended. So, you know, if you need help with that, we can help you. But there's a bunch of places, I mean, a bunch of uh, insurance companies that will, you know, be able to easily get your uh, travel insurance. Uh, there's not much add-ons or ex extra ex excursions. So that means you don't need to, we, we're not going to ask you to, like, you're on a cruise ship, and then do you want to go here? And you can pay 100 bucks here or 200 bucks here. We're not going to do that. <laughs> Everything is all inclusive. All right, so anything not listed would be maybe, you know, personal, you know, your, your own spare money or personal, you know, just a little bit, but you don't really need a lot of, a lot of money. Because we're not a shopping tour. We don't take you shopping for the sake of shopping, you know, like, you know, like go buy jade or, do, I mean, <clears throat> a lot of tour groups, they do, when, you, when they go to Beijing, they visit the jade factory, and then, Sometimes they go to a, uh, like uh, by Shanghai, they go to a silk factory, or or, or something like that. Well, it's it's or, or tea or tea plantation, you know, or even Chinese uh, traditional Chinese healing and medical pr practitioner, and then they'll teach you about Chinese medicine. Um, they teach you about uh, the, you know all the stuff about China, which is very interesting. But we are not going to get anyone involved with any shopping, you know, because this is a different group. It's not a regular tour group, all 
right? So you don't have to worry about okay being coerced into a shopping. So you spend money. Spend money. We actually have a responsibility to not make, not let you spend money, because you know we we don't we don't want you to come back and then you found yourself spending a whole lot of money and then you got a lot of things that you. At the time, you were like really excited. Oh yeah, this is like, like what I need. And then when you come back here, all this just let it sit there <laughs> and um, just go to waste. Um, so yeah, we don't involve with stuff like that. So that's you know I just give you. Um, well, I took longer than I had you know I anticipated, but that was the rundown of the plan. Okay, so. Um, Basically, um, this this will be some something that you're going to remember for a long time if you partake in it. Especially, you know, for uh, teenagers, uh, people are just starting out with their lives. I think it's a, a wonderful experience because uh, getting to know okay, what's on the other side of the globe. You know, they say you dig a hole and you go straight down and you get to China. <laughs> this, you know, you have to have a, a world view. And it's, it will be interesting because you, you're going to be able to see the old, the new, the east, and the west, all right? the traditional plus the modern, you know, the ide ideas that are clashing, the challenges that are facing, the good, the bad, the negative, the positive, and it will be a good comparison and contrast so that when you come back here, you'll be able to, you know, you see diff things differently. And you open your eyes, open, you know, widen your horizon. So I think it's one of the best investments anyone can make, you know, because you get a certain amount of knowledge from from reading, which is good, you know. But once in a while, you kind of want to go out there and learn by being there, and it's just different chemistry. Okay, so I especially love this kind of tour because I myself. Um, I love learning. I love exchange. I love to, you know, talk about things that are meaningful and making friends and you know bringing happiness and bringing you know you know friendship and culture to bridge the gap, so to speak. All right. So that's my presentation. I hope uh, that was okay for you.